Hey everyone, how's it going? Oxmas here and welcome back to Ever Crisis. We're going to be talking about Chocobo Farm. Is it worth it, especially when you're unlocking extra stables for well over a lot of blue crystals that can go towards uh, any kind of pull you want? Because the only thing you can't farm in this game is blue crystals. So this guy's going to kind of give you the idea. I've unlocked all the Chocobo stuff. I'll let you know what it's done for me, if it's worth it, or if you should just slow roll with one stable, two stables, or all three stables unlocked. Just remember that anything that's synthesis material can be farmed just by jumping to the quest and going at it. So let's talk about chocobos, what's the basics, how to get through all of it, what best chocobo to choose, and just is it worth it in the end. So you progress through the game, you made it to the stables. Uh, what do you do now? What are chocobos? What is what determines stats? What areas should you unlock and what's best of the best? So let's go through the basics. The basic is chocobo expedition and your chocobo stable. So starting with chocobos, something you should know. The little footprint is for grasslands. The little mountain symbol is for mountain terrain. And the river symbol is for the river areas. So under expedition, you're going to see that we have different areas. You're going to start off with Midgar, and then once you make 75%, you're going to go to Midgar too. These areas, Midgar, Grasslands, can all use the little footprint symbol that's Grassland Chocobo. Once you hit Wutai, Wutai is going to ask you for Mountain Chocobo, so you have to get Chocobos with the Mountain symbol on it. And that's how you know, and the last area is a River one. So that's why those symbols matter on Chocobos, is because it can only go into certain areas. Now the lettering is the only thing that determines what a chocobo is going to be, stat wise. The higher the letter in the alphabet, the weaker the chocobo. So the closer to the beginning of the alphabet, besides S, because S is high rank, uh, A being strong, B going down, C, so on, so on. So if we click on filter, we're going to see every chocobo they're going to bring out eventually, even an ocean chocobo. So there is future content coming out because right now the highest we have is C+. There is no B chocobos uh, currently from what nine knowledge is. So that and there is no ocean. But you can see here S plus is the strongest and H is the weakest. So as you go backwards into the alphabet or in the beginning, it's strong. So H being the worst, H plus getting better, G getting better, G plus, so on, F, F plus, E, E plus. Now we know that lettering is the termination of how much stat rolls you guys are going to get. What you're looking for is a very good build of rare drop rate and metal rate up. Metal rate up is a really good beginning one because the more metals you get, the better chocobos you can buy because a chocobo is very, very expensive. So color, the female, male chocobo doesn't determine anything as far as we know. All we know is that the lettering system gives better stats. You can see I have 3.5, 3.5, 7% increase. But if you go to my D plus chocobo, it's got 38% increase in guild, 38.5 in rare drop rate, 77 in metal drop including everything else, how many items it can carry, how fast it collects those items, right? So you can see this one can only hold six items and collects one every hour and 18 minutes. This one collects 12 items, 57 minutes and 30 seconds per item. Uh, then when you get something closer to D plus versus E plus, it's all RNG. So you're looking at E plus over here, exact same stats when the first two slots including 77%. So even though this is more expensive and a higher lettering, it doesn't mean it's going to be better, right? You can see the difference here. Experience rate up, not important. Uh, experience is going to cap at level 50 eventually. So it's not your go-to. Uh, the item collection rate is pretty nice, but it's more determined on rare drop rate end game and metal drop rate for future S plus chocobos because they're going to be expensive. So you can see that it doesn't really make that big of a difference and it's all RNG every time you purchase one from the shop. So we're going to go to the exchange over here and you're going to see this is my current setup for what I could purchase. I could purchase a C rank chocobo green for grassland for 7,000. But my recommendation is that you guys shouldn't be aiming for the most expensive because even if you roll a C plus, it might not have better stats than your E plus and your E plus only cost you 2,000. So instead of buying one C rank, you buy an E plus chocobo for 2000 because its stats can be really, really good compared to this one. So purchase E plus for now. Uh, you only go deeper once you have a good three E pluses on each area. And then you can start working towards the C's, the B's when they come out, so on and so on. So now that you know how the chocobos work and then 
guaranteeing this, that, that, that. It's all RNG whenever you purchase a Chocobo. What did I do for my progress? I started off in the grassland and the first area, Midgar, with just H Chocobos. If I were to change this, I would say definitely maybe roll some of the Chocobos that cost 50 or 100. I bought the ones that cost 5. So you can see I have really weak Chocobos here. The thing you're early game doing is that you want rare drop rate somewhat decent and chocobo metal rate somewhat decent it's more important how fast a chocobo collects and the rare drop rate so you can get out of those areas at 75 percent as soon as possible when you get to the mountain areas when you can consider buying better chocobos you can see my mountain is e plus h plus and g having that one e plus made a huge difference and eventually you're going to need three h pluses anyways so if you want to get out of that place quick you could go for multiple E pluses, but one was good enough for me, plus an H plus and a G. And this one helped a lot. Rare drop rate 38.5. This is where I put all my Chocobo boosters so I can get out of exploration quicker to get to the last area. And then once I hit the last area, I grabbed River Chocobo that cost five and then a River Chocobo that was E plus. And then I recently tried a D plus and you can see the stats aren't that different. The biggest thing is that it collects items quicker which makes a difference, right? You're saving time there, but only by seven minutes. Just work on E pluses. That way you can afford multiple and you get out of those areas quicker and better drop rates. That's usually the progress I would recommend. Try to get good drop rate, rare drop rate and item collection so you can get progress. And also item drop rate plus the item collection rate up means that you can get all those items that you want to farm. Now let's jump into this part. I'm going to talk about in the end of the video what I think about having multiple slots open versus not having multiple slots, but let's go through the basics. We're going to put a character on here with a chocobo, put a character that's not level 50, so that way they earn experience as they ride. Every area has different drop rates, and I'll talk about which one's the best, but you're going to put your chocobo, explore, it tells you until the next one, and a maximum of all 14 will take me 12 hours. You are going to use your Chocobo boosters in the beginning all the way until now. I'm going to stop using them because I'm in the last area. And when a new area is unlocked, I'm going to have a bunch of Chocobo boosters to get me through that area very quickly for the extra bonuses. So I'm saving my Chocobo boosters from this point on now that I'm in the last area. But in the beginning, don't be afraid to use these to progress and get further into the actual whole entire system. So... Chocobo booster would be my best Chocobo over here, and I would just use them, use them for that 77% metal rate and 38.5 rare drop rate. Then you collect all of them whenever they're up, and well, it says I got 25% place explored, so that means I ended up getting something new out of this. And the way you can check, you go to Expedition, and you check this mining fine glass, where it says Explore 50%, you click it, and it shows you all the items you collect in this area. I haven't got a Chocobo booster, haven't found these two exploration items, and this three star plus this two star. Exploration items are only to get this to 100%. They have no other value in the game besides that. Once you collect them once, you'll never see them again. So a quick recap, you want to have the ability to 75% get out, get this to 75%, get out, all the way until you get to the later ones because they cost more metals, more experience, more gill, and they drop three star synthesis material and enhancement material for your weapons. So now we're here, what items should you be aiming for what has the most value, what's really, really important. Besides making 75% or 100 for the blue crystal, what you should do once you have like the best chocobos, come back and finish us off with the free blue crystals. But besides getting to 100% and getting blue crystals, these are the items you guys should be aiming for and a little bit of a tip to get you to the next area, the ocean area or any future content. Here's a little boost. The items that have the best value that you can't really get anywhere else is the material upgrade, right? Material booster M that's in the second last area. On the third stage, it's one of the common drops. And in Grassland 2, you get yourselves the two-star version. And you can see after all this time, I only have 87 of these bottles over here. And I've only got 25 of these. And I, uh, oh, 35. And I don't really use these. I, I, maybe not at all. Maybe I use them for an example on stream, but that's about it. Where everything else you can farm. Like this is basic. Everything gives you it co-ops. This comes from the quest plus co-ops that are not currently on right now. But if you look at the yellow ones, you'll see that they're in a co-op. But you get both of these in co-op, right? They come from synthesizing material quests, which cost a little bit of stamina, 15 per run. And they drop a lot of synthesis materia that you need, but not necessary to come out of your way for these. So the biggest thing is those materia upgrades on the grasslands, on the first area, 
and maybe the growth material because we are going to go past level 50, right? So we're going to need more of these. So passively farming these is always good. Less stamina you need to use. And the other note I want to give you guys is that you should come back to Midgar 1 with a very strong chocobo that has a really good high drop rate for rare items because once you find all the exploration items, they never drop again. And this is a list that has the least amount of items. You can see there's only a total of eight green items and two rare ones. You can cap this out at 99 for future areas. And that's why I'm going to stop using it and using it for future areas. And you can grab a bunch of bookmarks, which reduces synthesizing by one hour. So you can farm very efficiently here if you have a very strong rare drop rate, because you're only competing against this many common items, right? So farming this, I think, has a lot of value. So come back to those areas, because if you go at the future areas and you look at all the items, there's a bigger list. Less chance of you grabbing the bookmark. Obviously, grabbing four star materia in the later areas is good, but I would say bring one chocobo back to the least, which is one of the first areas, and just try to farm uh, both the bookmark and the boosters until you hit 99. Then you can use one every time you get one. So overall items, I would say probably grab the three star here for maximum boost. Uh, is Materia Booster 3 star? You could do the 2 stars of uh, one chocobo here, one chocobo at the 3 star Materia, and then come over here and try to farm yourselves a bunch of this. I'm going to test this out still, but it seems like a really good idea. If not, just go back and farm those Materias. You can do Growth Stream items as well, but again, uh, events give it to you, everything else gives it to you. Everything here, everything gives it to you. It's just a very passive way to farm them for free uh, uh, if you spend the crystals, which have no way to farm and have more value than something you're going to have abundance of eventually. And then that brings me to the last part of this video. Is this worth it? Yes, it is worth it to at least have two slots unlocked. Three is if you want that early game progression and to not really have to worry about spending your stamina on this stuff and spending your stamina on everything else like summons, events, because that's where the true end game farm is. And that's where you're going to spend most of your stamina. Everything else is going to naturally happen just from progressing, events coming out, story update. You're going to get your weapons to level 90. You're going to get all your characters level 50. You're going to get all your stuff done. The only thing left is summons and endlessly farming material to get your materials at five star with best stats. And again, since your stamina is free, you can just do the quest to farm those. So not really necessary to have this farm up, but it will make a very good passive income of the synthesis they work hand in hand five slots unlocked three slots unlocked you can make materia infinitely without ever have to worry about farming but eventually you're gonna have so much stamina that you might just go what do i do with it and then you spend your blue crystals which isn't much it's only 2000 but it's still 2000 towards anything that you want in the coming up a lot of collaborations halloween costumes christmas costumes any holiday costumes future characters their alternate costumes weapons so I find more value in blue crystals, but I couldn't resist making a chocobo farm because I love chocobos. So to me, in the end, it was worth it just to have a bunch of chocobos. But when it comes to the item drop, it's convenience versus anything else, to be honest. You don't need this. You don't have to have all three slots unlocked. It just makes life easier. So that's going to be up to you guys if you want to use this chocobo farm to its fullest or you can completely ignore it and only put one stable or two stables up and let them have fun. And you get some little items here and there. Well, that's pretty much everything, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it did help you, don't forget to leave a like down below. Uh, comment on anything you guys want to add to this. If I forgot something or if the future changes and the later areas are better, I'll let you guys know in another video. But if you guys ever want to catch my live streams, I stream on Twitch. Links down below. Discord community for any questions, help. They're all there down below as well. As for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep on smiling, and I'll smell you later.